These are these are done to life size. Actually, uh, Mr. Ford was five foot nine inches with shoes. He was six, five foot ten, and in bronze you have a shrinkage of a quarter inch to the foot. It's, it's basically set up and, and, and uh, threaded. You thread a uh, one inch water pipe. And it goes up each leg into the hip area, and then it's joined and all welded. And then it's run up right through to the head. So it's as sturdy as it can possibly be. And then that was covered with, uh, with fiberglass mannequin parts, actually. And uh, they were filled with the uh, Bondo and uh, epoxies to make everything as absolutely rigid as possible. The sculpture is uh, so much different than painting because you're, instead of dealing with light and color, you're dealing with space. You have to take averages when you're not dealing with a a living subject. And it's beginning to look like it. Constant battle of drawing, and of course this is still the stage we're at, is, is to draw and make sure the drawing is correct. Making everything relate to everything else in the model. So it really has to dry from the inside out. So I'm constantly spraying it with water and constantly repairing any cracks that show up. And then it's attached. The armature came down through here. There was a, an aluminum rod. It came down here, was wrapped in wire. This is a threaded rod only because the clay has a better chance of adhering to it. Then this is put together, wired, and then it's epoxy for rigidity so it doesn't move. This clay is all reusable. There's a bag of, uh, of hard clay there that I spray into every once in a while. Just add water to it and it becomes completely reusable again. This has to be worked in fairly tight. I'm not doing any screening here because there should be plenty of, of, uh, of points of adhesion for the clay. You have to work it into all the crevices and creases. And as I indicated, this thing does get sprayed with water about every 15 minutes. It's doused to the extent of a couple of gallons of water a day. This whole, this whole business, what I'm doing here and in this, in this foundry is extremely traditional. And very, and it has been for, you know, it's very, very much the same as it has been for many, many years. Bronze casting is done essentially the same as it was done in, in ancient Rome and Egypt. They used a lot more sand molds. They, of course, didn't have silicones. And care too much about the body. I wanted to I wanted people well, the body. to I come back from the lunch yeah. and go, There's God, some. Mr. Ford's looking at us. <laughs> you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted to make sure the face was exactly perfect. And uh, and uh, I think it's about as good as it's gonna get. Don't worry about it dripping, it's gonna drip. Yeah, it does want to do that, doesn't it?
now what I'm going to do is to take this knife and find where the parting line is, which I've already done a little bit of. But once I find this parting line, I separate the plasters and the pieces will hopefully pieces ready to come off of there. That's why it's important when you make these plasters to make them so that they don't lock on. Otherwise you have problems taking them apart. And now this is ready to come off. 